Well, we are the, uh, the presentation after the break, so um, people will filter in, hopefully, out of sheer excitement from what they're hearing. Um, I am Andrew. This is Hanson. We are from Embrace, and we're here to talk about uh, open telemetry for mobile apps. Um, full disclosure, I'm mostly here for eye candy. Um, I'm going to be doing a brief introduction as to why we're here and talking about this, but the meat of the presentation is from Hanson, who was formerly a uh, mobile performance engineer at Twitter. Uh, he had about 45 minutes of content that he's going to talk about in about 11. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Okay, so uh, why are we here? Uh, for a minute, consider that 72% of digital transactions last year happened on a mobile device. Now that wasn't all native mobile apps, some of it was mobile web, but if you think about the most iconic brands that you interact with on your phone, I'm gambling that most of them have a native app that you interact with on a pretty consistent basis. And uh, you know, as we think about the observability ecosystem, we've been spending, I don't know, 10 years really uh, marching toward how we do observability better for back-end systems. Open tracing, open census were built for distributed systems. Uh, but mobile apps are not a distributed system. They are a installed software system running on distributed compute resources that interact with distributed systems. And there's a lot of unique challenges with that environment. Uh, you have sometimes dodgy network connectivity. You have um, a massive cardinality of device types. I think when we were looking at our, uh, the, the number of unique devices for just one customer that we saw, uh, it was like 42,000 different combinations of device models and chipsets that could potentially exist. Um, you have different regions, different OS versions, different app versions. Um, also to say, like you're dealing with lots of data coming from uh, very disparate sets uh, interacting with your backend distributed systems. And uh, for most of its life cycle, observability and monitoring in the mobile ecosystem has been mostly proprietary systems designed by vendors. Um, the kind of basic observability or monitoring that any app developer put, puts in is uh, Firebase Crashlytics, crash which was something that was kind of acquired from Twitter and formerly its own, own little company. Um, it's free, except you don't get data for 12 hours until a customer's actually interacted with the device. It's highly sampled. It's limited to like a million events a month. So if you're a serious uh, app developer, you're not going to use it. Um, and as a result, you've had all of these vendors building their own proprietary standards and trying to convince people um, that they should be serious about observability with that. But mostly, it's just crash reporting, error tracking, et cetera. And the result is that the paradigm looks a little bit like this. Um, I'll notice that the single line leg is, uh, open, is metrics for uh, mobile devices. And, I think Hanson will dive into a little bit as to why that is. But like, um, it, it, for broadly speaking, a lot of mobile engineers actually consider this to be an acceptable picture. Um, but when we talk to customers that are very serious about digital transactions happening on mobile, um, they say all of our customer impacting SLOs are directly tied to my mobile device. And yet I have no good source of information that correlates to all of the hard work I've been doing to build reliability and resiliency in my backend systems. What am I supposed to do? And so we're going to talk a little bit about our challenges and the, and the paradigm that we're facing today. But more than anything, this is a call to action, which is if you have uh, coworkers or people who are interested in the mobile ecosystem, uh, Hanson's working on the Android SIG. We have folks working on the Swift SIG, et cetera. Please talk to us afterward. We'd love to get you involved. Alrighty. Name is Hanson. Pronouns he, him. I'm a Chinese looking guy, bald head, glasses, your typical type, I guess. Uh, and I want to talk about open telemetry and observability in general uh, in mobile. So the crux of the problem that we're trying to solve in mobile for observability is not merely trying to port the tooling over to these mobile platforms. I think there are fundamental differences in the basic assumptions that we make and the questions that we ask of, of our observability tools. And before we can even move forward, we have to acknowledge what these are, recognize it, before we can do the right thing. 
So Andrew said mobile is unique. How? I don't got three hours, so I'm just gonna try to do it in three minutes. First, runtime environment. This bad boy is not a Kubernetes cluster. You cannot configure how much CPU you get, how much RAM you have. It is wild. I can walk in to an elevator with this device. My network connection is gone. Uh-oh, my app is affected. Not only that, the CPUs on these guys are also very limited. We have low-end MediaTek chipsets, 10 years old, running OSs that are very strict in terms of how they provision resources. So not only have limited hardware, you have the OS saying, oh yeah, 50 megabytes of a heap, that's good enough for you. You go over, GC, uh-oh, my app is really slow, why? Well, you know, if you're observing, you might know. And worse yet, SLOs on mobile apps is not purely based on operational performance. I will perceive a workflow as being slow using the same device that somebody else may not think is slow. User perceived performance is part of the equation, and it's really hard to calculate that by simply measuring very, very specific numbers. Second, the pipeline to get data, telemetry from mobile devices to the back end is extremely fragile. Data could be lost in a number of different steps. Crashes could take down anything that you're observing that you have not written to disk. Even if you write to disk, just because you write to disk, it doesn't mean it actually gets to the back end. Or if it does, maybe it's delayed by minutes, hours, days. These are not edge cases. These are happens every time for most people. And lastly, the data, the telemetry capture, has to center on user experiences. Anything that we capture is in service to that. Operational duration, device context, everything that we do, everything that we get, is so that we can replicate the user experience in data. When we're looking at a big system, P99 might just be a condition of how the system is running, whether it's healthy. P99 for a mobile app is 1% of all measurements. And if you have a 100 million DAU, 1% is a big, big number. And at the end of that 1% is a user staring at your app, waiting, waiting for it to load. And it's, it's not only that they do it once, it's they do it again and again and again, because slow devices tend to be slow all the time. And that's where you get things like churn, because this app is too slow, I un uninstall it. A new set of 1% gets in and churns. So let's talk about Otel. Otel is great. It is the lingua franca of observability. It allows the back end, the front end, and the, and the mobile apps in between to basically talk in the same language. We use the same words, we use the same nouns. But it was designed for a back end centric distributed tracing world where there are certain assumptions that just don't apply in mobile. So I'm gonna talk about spans. Spans are great, we love spans, don't we? Applause for spans. Uh, but they don't work so well for all circumstances. Uh, if you wanna measure operational duration to pick out outliers, spans are fantastic. But what if duration is not an indicator of performance? User sessions, uh, if you wanna have something on screen, you wanna measure how long it, you know, users have interacted with it, long is actually good potentially, or just, it just happens. Network existence, it's just a span. It, well, maybe not a span if you be really strict about it, but it could be. Uh, operations also run for a long time on the client, and not knowing the state of those operations until you end it, kind of problematic, especially if you are at key moments of the app lifecycle. If you background the app and your span is not done, I guess we can keep our fingers crossed the OS doesn't kill it before it's done, but if it does, uh-oh, what are you gonna do? Also, operations need to be contextualized with a lot of mutable state that changes all the time, and getting that data and writing them as attributes of a span can potentially be very expensive, waiting for your system to come back with the Wi-Fi status or whatever. Second, the protocol and the APIs of OpenTelemetry makes certain assumptions that are mm, not true on mobile. So telemetry being recorded and transmitted reliably, 
Not true. Sometimes you don't get it. So we need to build in resilience within the tooling to do things like buffer to disk before we send to the collector, which is what the Open Telemetry Android project has done. Cesar has done great work around that. Um, and then also atomic transmission of related events and devices or uh, in data. If we only get a partial set of information in the server, we don't know if it's a complete picture. Knowing that everything is either there or not there is extremely helpful. And there's nothing built in to really do that. Also, assuming that recording and transiting telemetry doesn't actually uh, pose a um, significant amount of overhead. Ugh. Try your Android Go device from eight years ago run it with a gig of RAM. It, trust me, it, it, taking a span on the main thread, oh, it impacts performance. So you have to be very careful about what you measure, how you measure it. Another assumption before, before I take a drink of water is that engineers using the API are familiar with concepts like tracing and, and threads and, and context propagation. Well, mobile developers are a much more diverse group um, in terms of skill set, experience. They're used to higher level constructs that don't have the notion of a thread. Well, they have a notion of a thread, but not the actual thread of a thread. And if you say, hey, trace this, you know, propagate context on threads, uh-oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but they want to measure performance. And they look at the API and they're like, oh, maybe it's not for me. And also traced operations have clear and execution boundaries and ownership is, is you know, fundamental to, to break down a distributed trace into spans. Whew. Look at a mobile code base with 200 modules, different teams owning different parts, executing on different threads. Instrumentation can be extremely brittle if you don't manage it in the right way. And mobile apps, unfortunately, generally managed in the right way is not something you associate with mobile app architecture. Last point I want to make is simply about mobile devices being millions of different app instances running on different, phone, different phones. Metrics, at least the way Otel does it, really not conducive to presenting mobile app metrics in a, in a way that is super useful. Uh, without the proper context, ground, and baseline, and do comparisons, you're basically munging together a bunch of different systems with a bunch of different runtime contexts. So if I tell you P75 heap size of JVM, JVM is 60 megs, is that good or bad? If you change it to, to 70, is it, is it good or bad? Is it just a, the, the OS is more permissive? Or, or is there a memory leak? Who knows? But we, we, we want to know. And having strict time-aligned aggregations is really not suitable for the types of operations that we're trying to measure because they could run super long and we can miss the window. And, well, I can go on, but I won't. Basically, it's not bad. It's just different. Open telemetry is designed to solve a specific problem in a specific context. And we're kind of like, ha ha, here comes mobile apps. We're going to change all these assumptions, expect it to work. No, of course it's not going to work. But it doesn't mean it can't work. I mean, there are ongoing work in you know, various SIGs, uh, Slacks, you know, private DMs. Uh, Jason back there with the mask, done great work on the Android open telemetry uh, code base in order to you know, bring it to you know, everybody. And we need help, not only to you know, write code, but to ask questions. I'm familiar with consumer mobile apps running on tablets and, and phones, but what about IoT? What about you know, things that run in cars? I don't know those, but those are mobile, and they have different questions. So we need everyone to kind of come in and say, hey, my stuff is a little different. Please, you know, how, can I, how can Open Telemetry help me? What do I have to do? Um, and we're asking these questions all the time. And uh, we won't stop asking these questions. Because as others have said, we're never going to be done, which is great, because it's fun. Questions. questions, that's it.
the question is, if there's one change for open telemetry, what would we want it to be? Uh, Andrew might have different answers, but for me, it's just more people getting into this and asking questions and using it in different ways. You know, we came in with some very you know, basic assumptions and we're like, hey, this is fantastic, spans. We can do a lot with spans. Oh, we can, I guess, but maybe not. And there are other questions. So without people asking questions, we are never going to find the answers. So for me, that's like more people participating and asking use cases, you know. Yeah, I'm not going to make like a feature demand, but I think a lot of things are in progress. Uh, you know, as an example, we have this concept of a user session, which is really co kind of a collection of user behavioral and technical data. Um, I mean, mobile apps are interesting in that like it's not the computers deciding what pathways you exercise, it's the humans. And that becomes pretty unpredictable, but pretty material in understanding state that resulted in some sort of terminal activity in the app, whether it's um, the customer having a really good experience or uh, you know, force closing because of long running operations. Um, and that, while it can be modeled as a trace, as kind of Hansen was uh, talking about, I mean, th you're asking completely separate questions of what you would normally ask a span. Um, it, you, in fact, in engagement time, if you're measuring an operation can actually be quite ideal in a mobile app because it's an indicator that the customer is actually engaging with the content as opposed to an operation that's running a long time. So I think figuring out how to model those things correctly so that you can ask the different types of questions you want to ask is pretty critical. So entities is, is I think, going to be a great step. Um, events are going to be a, a great step forward. Uh, events could also have end, end, end start time and end time, but I'm not going to open that discussion. Um, <laughs> So, so there is great work happening, and almost done. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, don't worry about it. Are there any more questions before we, we can also shout out entities? Sorry. Shout out Jason. Depends what you define a session replay. Like, does our product have it? No. In Yeah, I mean, traditional web replay products looked at the DOM, right, which is not really super accessible um, or at all in a native mobile app. And we obviously can't do a screen recording because that would carry information about a customer's activities and information you wouldn't want to expose. Um, there are vendors playing around with it, but I mean, I guess we don't have a, we don't currently think about it in a, in a way that we're modeling it within our own SDKs. Five grade session replay with lots of, you know, new data model, you know, specific data model for parsing and, and aggregating is, is like that, that hoof with a really fine detail fur. We're just trying to get a face on this guy. <laughs> just, just, just a face. So baby steps, baby steps. All right. Thanks all. Uh, we'll be outside during lunch. Feel free to talk Tip to us. Tip your waitresses and waiters and stuff.